so brush um, Fadipe, thank you for agreeing to come on through it all. It's really a pleasure to see you here. Um, uh, like we advertised, you are a dead man walking. <laughs> you know, um, so it all is all about encouragement. Sure. It's not a journalism thing. We are not looking for facts. We're just looking for um, how you have enjoyed the grace and the favor of God in your life. Starting oh. from your life, the, the start of your life, up until today. You, you understand? Yeah, and I understand. Of course, it's not, yes, it's going to be primarily your story, but it's mm -hmm. about using your story to encourage somebody to lift up some, I mean, lift up someone and to give somebody hope and let them know that whatsoever they are going to, um, there is a God in heaven that yeah. raised and rose in the affairs of men. Okay, sure. All right. So um, that's, that's all what through it all is all about. So we would really want to hear your story. Um, I know the one everyone is really uh, waiting for is the military thing, but we are not going to start yeah. from there. <laughs> <laughs> we are not going to start from there. I want you to start from any point convenient for you, from, for you, maybe okay. from your childhood, and then we take it from uh, there. up until today. Well, like you rightly said, I'm a man of grace. All my life, it has been the grace of God. Because if you listen to my story very well, you discover that it can only be God. I was told that my mom labored for five days. Wow. Five solid days. Wow. And on the fifth day, my aunt, that's my, my father's elder sister, a trained midwife. Because at all the, all the while, my mom was in the, um, what they call them? This maternity home in the church, the church, CSU Lubode, maternity church, CSU Lubode. And because she said, I must not be taken to the hospital. Mm. But my aunt couldn't take it again and say, look, this woman will die. The baby too might die. So she went out to look for ambulance. And um, miraculously, according to what my mom told me, as the ambulance got to the church and was saying, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Bring her, bring her, the ambulance is here. As she caught it in, I came out. Wow. And she said, Oluwashio. <laughs> All right. So, so that, that, that is the genesis of your name. Exactly. That is where the name came from. It actually was given to me by my aunt at birth. Well, like, um, I lost my father very early. My father died in 1966. December 30th, 1966. Wow. And uh, I am the first child. I have two other sisters. My second sister was about seven months, April, that's seven, eight months when our father died. And I will tell you, it was rough. I mean, well, a lot of my family does know me to say this, but really I'm not saying it to spite anybody. I'm just saying it to let you know, no matter the situation, Whatever you, you, you want to become, the Bible says somewhere that every aspect of our life has been written down even before we were born. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. Yes, it was rough. Well, like I keep telling people up till now, I don't really know what happened between my mother and the in-laws, that is my father's family. I think they don't see eye to eye. Yes, 
and according to her, because we grew up suffering. Mm. And it's like, look, we can hear this name. You can hear that name. How come? He said, no, my, your family doesn't want to see me. Well, let me just cut that short. The only man that took her in was her own stepfather, who incidentally was a Shogo worshiper. He was the head of Shogo. If you know this, Olanda, this, they call it Abba Shogo. This, the present, um, this, after Akobo, this Ujuri side, that was it. Towards Olanda, that was the village then. So okay. that was the man that took my mother in. And honestly, for the for from there, 10 years, I was, I would say I was an ardent other worshiper. Because you can't tell me that Christians are better than um, other worshipers. You understand what I'm saying now? I do, I do. Yes. But I kept my life going, the the the, the bit I could, and um from one area to the other, my mother was at the time in the war, working as a matron at, um, I think, Amadia Second, Amadia Grammar School, thereabout. We were there. That's where I started my primary school there, maybe 1960, that should be 67, 68. Okay. So, yes, but a time came, I think there was a policy that Christians, you don't want Christians to work within the Muslim schools, except you are married to another Muslim. Another okay. so can be, Yes, that can be okay. And according to my mom, she said she was not ready to do that. So she left the work and went back to Ibadan. Right? That's where I started my um, primary school, CAC, uh, primary school, everything. But there's something about me, which at times, I'll sit down and say, God, you are just awesome. You know, from primary one to primary three, I will always come last in class. I will always come last. Yes. I don't know if anyone uh, that was my schoolmate then will, will, will remember that. But, and they will tell me that I, at the time I will even leave the school, I, I want to go and see my mom. I will, okay. We, my mom was staying at, uh, initially was at Odeaje, then later she moved to Oluyoro, and my school was uh, at Irifi. Oluyoro is in Ibadan, all those. Oluyoro, Oluyoro in Ibadan, Odeaje in Ibadan, all just okay. the same general area. So I would leave the school, walk back from school to the house to see my mom, and walk back to school. So it's like my life was not having any direction. So I, I think someone just made up a, a, a mind and said, look, this boy is brilliant. Is there a way he can be taken away from the mother? And that was a bit of a uh, uh, hassle for my mom. But eventually, I think my mom succumbed and I was taken to Oshobo. Okay. To stay with our own younger brother is going to be with the Lord right now, uh, Ms. Boiga Adigoke. And okay. interestingly, interestingly, you know, in those days, whether you fail or pass, you were promoted. You know? That's so true. <laughs> I, I was coming last in class and I still found myself in primary four when I got to Shubo, but there was a ton of events. Mm. I think the teacher I was handed to, over to kept me with another brilliant um, pupil then with a good handwriting. Okay. And you know, before the end of that term, my situation turned around. Everything about me came to life. And I began to top the class mm. until I left primary six. Went back to Ibadan. I mean, let me just leave all those details. I'm just telling you, let people know that no matter what, God has a plan for each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. I went to secondary school, right? After I left secondary school in 1980, it was even by miracle I finished because I don't mm -hmm. want to, I didn't want to really say why I would have dropped out of school because, like I said, I, I don't want people to look at 
it, they might not be looking at it from the way I look at it. I don't want to put anybody into disrepute, right? But something happened, I will have stopped school, right? Okay. But the principal of the school then, I think I was in form four, we just resumed to form four, and nobody to pay my fees again. But the man, I think I had a friend. It's, um, uh, it's, a, it's my good friend, I won Razak Lawa. He was very close to the principal. I think he went and talked to the principal that, because at, with him, we tried to uh, uh, look for scholarship with um, uh, MKO Foundation and Ganifa Emi Foundation mm -hmm. then. But the, the stringent condition, I think we couldn't fulfill those conditions. So my friend now spoke to the principal. We were classmates, but it was quite close to the principal. That if this boy leaves school, there's nobody to pay the school fees. Hmm. And Mr. Uh, Chief uh, Samuel uh, uh, Murakio, the man is about 88 now, he's still alive, wow. and said, Well, she, I, can, I can still recall it very well. She is one of the brilliant students I'm looking up to to bring up the glory of the school. So I won't see you dropped out of school. He told my mom to go back home, right? And that is like giving me scholarship for the rest of my school. Wow. Wow. And to God be the glory. Uh, I was a food prefect in my time. And I had the best results when I passed out from secondary school. Hallelujah. So now, they, I have a good result. In fact, I just missed... Uh, uh, what they, that uh, from grade one, that distinction, because I was not very good in mathematics. <laughs> so that worried me, dropped me out. I dropped out with about three points. Mm. So now, no admission to university. I think we were the second set that started JAM. I think JAM, if I can recall it very well, JAM started in 79, or is it 80? If it's 80, then we were the first set. If it's 79, then we we're the second set of JAM. And um, no admission to the polytechnic, no to university, nothing. As at that time, my mom has moved with her husband. You know, my, my mom got remarried in 1970 to a soldier. Yes. So as at that time, they were in Kaduna. So I had to move to Kaduna with them. And um, I was working at, um, they got a place for me at command, command and Staff College as a clerical officer. I could recall very well the president Alaki right now, uh, about Baribo, who was a lieutenant colonel. And uh, he was saying that, I mean, he said he was not going to give me admission and my uh, employment. So later he joked with me, he said, no, why would I deprive you? What, I, what he was saying was that a time will come, I will leave the work for them. Because I'm a young man, he does not expect me to continue that way. So when, when by, I started walking around, uh, if I can recall it very well, maybe August of 1980. And by April, no, by, by, by January, I took my form to him for him to endorse. He said, see, <laughs> but I think he was happy with me and uh, he encouraged me also. One thing led to the other. And how did I get there? We went to play squash with my stepfather one of these days at police college, Kaduna. That's why I said, God has a way of arranging things for his people. Nothing comes by accident. Exactly. So, yes. When we got there, after the squash game, it was, it was, the man was a, a retired lieutenant colonel, one lieutenant colonel, Pam. He now asked my stepfather, I said, ah, Paul, what's your boy doing? He said, he works with Commander Staff College. And the man said, come on. Why did you expose this small boy to money at this tender age? Why can't he go to the university? Didn't he pass his exams? He said, no, he has the best results. Then let him try in the So some, my, my servant I said, ah, he does not want to go. So I now told him, I said, no, 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 no. I don't know why my, my stepfather, my mom, didn't want me to join the army. And the man just said, I said, forget this old man. He, 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 <laughs> he, talked to, he talked to one other major and said, look, 
get phone for the young man, let him go and try his luck. And then um, <laughs> one thing led to the other. I was given, uh, I passed my entrance exam, passed the interview, and I was uh, admitted to NDA on the 14th of July, 1981, to start my, my, my training as a member of 30th regular course. And that is where I, the journey of my adulthood actually started from. And throughout that period, God was with me in the academy. In my second, uh, my fourth year after our, um, well, that time we have this like HSC. This um, is a national diploma exams. So I became the best army cadet. I, God was with me. I won so many awards. Then continue even in my final year in um, 1984, I became the best all rank cadet. And um, like I said, God was with me throughout. And I started my military career. I was posted to Lagos. But there's something I really want us to know, especially for young men listening to me. In the area of marriage, you cannot do it alone. All this why, you know, a young man, brilliant, uh, if you see me in those days, very smart looking, I believe, uh -uh, I can have my way with any woman. You understand that kind of uh, thing? <laughs> <laughs> and I went to so many marriages, it did not work. Mm. I attempted, it did not work. Then finally, in 1989, I got married to someone that not, it did not even last up to a, month, a year. There was no child and I made up my mind I was not going to get married again. And let me, I will not say as God will have it, maybe the devil, I was posted to Paracord. Yeah, I want people to listen to this, very, very important in my life. I, I have never been ashamed of it. And I got to Paracord and I said, well, I've made up my mind I was not going to get married again. Let me, and, and all my life I'd wanted three children. I said, let me look for, I was a child of God, mind you, not that I did not know the Lord, but yet I went my own ways. You know what the Bible says, it said, um, do not lean on your own understanding. He said, in all your ways, in all your ways acknowledge him. And, and he will it your heart. Heart. But as at that time, I was carried away with those problems. A bad relationship, it never worked. I said, no, I don't want to bother myself again. And I said, let me look for three women who have children for me and I will live my life. And I was happy with myself. I was proud of myself. And I got to Port Harcourt. Yes, I got three women. And they all agreed to have children for me. One afternoon, I came back from work. God is awesome. God is awesome. And that day, that afternoon, I was I wanted to go, I wanted to go for golfing, but I was just weak. I sat down on my sofa in my, my living room and I could feel the awesome presence of God. I mean, it was so awesome as I'm talking to you. I didn't see anything, but I could see I, I was captivated by his presence. Then I heard the voice, it was so clear. He said, are you happy with yourself now? Because I knew what he was saying. I said, yes, I'm, I'm happy with myself. Out of these three uh, women, two of them are already pregnant. So why am I going to disturb myself with marrying anybody? <laughs> and God said, you think what you have done is right? I said, beautiful. And God put me through the life of people that have lived that kind of life. I don't want to mention them now. That's personal to me. It made me feel that. I said, God, their lives are not worthy of emulation. Then why did you do it? And I said, God, because I was not caught out for marriage. I know what God said. He said, did you ask me for a wife? Wow. I'm just telling you a personal encounter with God. Wow. I, I said, well, even if I ask you now, it's too late. Two of them are already pregnant. You know what God said? He said, did you ask me for a wife? That, that what God keeps saying. I said, well. And I remember that that was in December 1990. So I remember that towards the last three days of the year, 
the um, elders in our church, C.S. Rumogbaden in Port Harcourt, they do have a three days dry fast to end the year. When members of the church could join them. Okay. I fast regularly, but I've, as at that time, I'd never done any dry fast. So I said, okay, let me struggle and join them. I just contemplated it in my heart that I would join them and ask for a wife. And the encounter with the Lord just cleared off. But you know what happened? Three days after that encounter, one of the ladies came to me and said, look, I've thought about it. How can I have a child for someone that will not marry me? He said, you know, I can take care of myself. I'm going to take care of myself. God will give you a woman that will do that for you. And, I, and she showed that God will give her her own husband. Honestly, I got transfixed. I couldn't ask her anything because I could see. I've not started the prayers. God just saw my heart and it's, he moved. That lady went and removed it, which I was not proud of anyway, but it was for my future. Now, a week later, the second, one of this, the second lady that was present came and was crying. What happened? She lost the pregnancy. Hmm. Honestly, I look up to sky. I say, God, I know you love me. And I actually did that fast and prayer. It was not easy. And But you know the interesting thing? God answers prayer. He does. You know my late wife. You know my late wife very well, fella. We grew up together in an area, and I left that area 14 years until I met her again in 91. All right. We can continue. Okay, this fella. Yeah. Uh -huh, this fella, yes. Okay. The moment I was at, I, I, I traveled from a Port Harcourt to Ibadan. 14 years I've been going there, I've never come across her. But the moment I saw her, she was coming in the bus, ah, not knowing that she had seen me. So the moment the bus stopped in my front, he said, ah, this is Fela now. You know, I said, him, how are you? I greeted her. And you know what the Lord told me? He said, that is your wife. Wow. I mean, I got it. And I told myself, I said, no, no this one cannot be married. This one should have been married. Fela left uh, secondary school in 1980, right? Uh, that's 11 years to that time. In 91, and uh, you'll have finished our school now. You'll have just been married. But that thing was strong in my heart. So I managed to ask, where are you? She says in the polytechnic, come, are you a lecturer or what? <laughs> we laughed about it and the boss left. So I went to see a friend, my account of uh, the, the defunct uh, society general, one Stephen Ajayi. And I said, oh boy, look at what happened today. He said, what did you do? I said, the lady has left. He threw the khaki to me and said, you have to go after her. Go after her. And I drove to a polytechnic. She was, the fellow was about to have her last uh, paper, um, lecture for the day. And for the whole of that, for close to two, and even after they closed, we were still talking in the car. So I was convinced now that, I would not tell her that, come on, you are my wife. You know what I told her? I said, hey, you are finishing your, 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 your school now. Why can't you come over to the East, at least to do your um, uh, youth service, you know? Maybe that was a way for, for her to get close to me. You know what she, she said? No, 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 no. She's traveling out to Spain. Uh, you are traveling out to Spain? All right, there's a break in transmission. Let's all done. Rochelle's wife, um, Oluwafela, was actually a very close friend of mine. Um, we were in secondary school together. That's how I got to know uh, Rochelle Fadipe. Um, 
she was actually a year my senior but um she was a very wonderful person very pleasant very very pleasant sorry we're going to wait for Russian to come back i think he has dropped out um i want him to talk the story of fella by himself i'm not going to take it from him um please let's just hold on i i okay so let me this all done i need to bring him all right you can mute yourself now okay all right yeah all right. so can i continue now please just go ahead okay so now but do you know the inter inter interesting thing i was you know like i told you after i encounter with god i stop all this nonsense going after women and the rest and i said god since you said i should ask you for a wife let me not do it my own way just send me anyone you want me to marry you understand i went back to to portaco but that that encounter with her was around um either march april but i was in my office around september when i got a postcard mind you she said she was traveling out i wanted to help her through this youth service to, to take her to the East to, so that she can be closer to me there. But the Holy Spirit had to do it himself. Mm. In, in, in September, I was in the office and I got a postcard. I was cracking my brain. I don't know anybody, a lady that would send me there. So I tore it open. I can still recollect what he wrote. He said, I am sure you'll be surprised. I learned Oweri is not far from Portacourt. If you don't mind, come over and see me, you fella. Ah! She was actually posted to Imo State. Wow. To serve. And I was in, in Portacourt. Then, good road, one hour drive from Portacourt to Oweri. I went there, saw her, and one thing led to the other. Yes, there were some other issues, but God took perfect control. And to cut it short, on the 26th of January, 1993, I got wedded to her. And honestly, I can't, have, I can't ask for a better woman. She was my confidant. She was my support. She was everything to me. In fact, she was my best friend. And um, I just pray that God will continue to repose her soul in the name of Jesus. Well, when I joined General Dia, I joined General Dia in September 1993. He was the chief of defense staff then. I don't know him. But one way or the other, I was posted to him. Okay. Now, before the end, by November of that same year, he was made the chief of general staff and he retained me as his chief security officer. Honestly, when we talk of power, when we talk of influence, yes, we have all this. Do you understand what I'm saying? But one day, I woke up and that power was gone. Gone. Completely like a common criminal. How did this happen? On the 9th of December. You may not go into the details of the, okay. of the coup because okay. it's, not, it's not necessary. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you can take what? us to um you know what i'm particular about is mm. are the roles that god played in your life okay okay from the time <laughs> that you were arrested you understand okay. maybe yeah. before when you were arrested i wanted to take us in a very big way okay god not showed up for you okay now 
Yes, on that same day when my when I got to know about the coup, I knew there was trouble because I was part of the people that planned security for the for Asorok. And for you to take over, blood will have to flow. Do you understand? So the moment I was told about it, I got confused. That same night, on the night, I went to a lady evangelist in our church, CAC, then. And um, this lady had a gift of prophecy, right? So, and I, I got to a place, a house around 11, 11 in the night. And it's like, ah, Baba. I hope there's nothing new. I said, I remember that's the way I answered that day. I said, this was what I was told today. Ah. And we started praying. We prayed for about 10, 20 minutes. You know what she said? Ah. He said, I can't see your boss on the throne, no. And at the same time, Abacha was not on the throne. Ah. Well, that, that shows that that coup. We fail. But he said, God is telling her that whether I take part or not, I'm just telling you how God got me. He uh -uh. said, so whether I take part or not, it will happen because it's part of his own plan for this nation. Wow. He said, but God is saying that nobody will die, but six of us will go down. Ah, I said, this woman is like, you are trying to play with words. Once a coup fails, this this is death sentence, and you are saying nobody will die. <laughs> he said, but God is telling her that the whole thing will settle down on the on the uh, sixth month of the following year. She was so precise. Wow. You know, I went there for a solution, but I get I left there more confused. <laughs> I would like to be. I was more confused. But I just held on to one thing that nobody would die. And I continued. So on the 13th of um, December, there was a bomb attempt on our aircraft. And you know why that was so important to me? I was not supposed to be in that aircraft that day. And if that had succeeded, I would like explain to the whole world that for the past four years that I've been working with General Diaz, nothing happened to him. The only day I did not travel with him was the day his, bomb, his plane was bombed. So how can I explain that? Mm. So in church that day, I was crying. People thought I should be celebrating, but they didn't know what was deep in my heart. But there was a man of God in that church that day, on the 14th of, uh, of, of December in our church. December. Yes, a Muslim converted uh, Christian, a prophet, one prophet Muhammad, hmm. blind. Wow. He mentioned, he said, God sent me to him that is in um, Child Republic, that God said he has seen my labor of love, you understand, that, 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 it's time for God to reward me, to bless me. Do you know what came to my mind? I just said, ah, this man did not know we are planning something now. That shows that lady did not receive well from God. <laughs> I said that lady did not receive well from God. This is the true prophecy. And that is why the Bible says, test all spirits. So I left there jubilating that, ah, this, this school will succeed. Something will happen. But the Bible says, let let man be, uh, let, let man, let man let be God light. Be eh? Let God be true and every man yeah, light. Yeah, exactly, let God be true. Exactly one week after, exactly <laughs> one week after I was arrested. <laughs> I was the first to be arrested. You know, the Bible says they strike the, 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 the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. And the sheep will scatter. Mm. Yes. Before they even touch anybody, before they even go to arrest a guy in the house, I was the first to be arrested. Mm -hmm. hmm. And God used someone for me that day because I really, I didn't know the, the instruction that was given to them. When mm -hmm. they came for my arrest, 
they actually wanted, they, they thought maybe I would fight back and then um, that would be the best. I had the major that led the operation was saying, don't touch Oga because it's my junior. Say, don't touch Oga, don't touch Oga. Oga is not like that. That shows those boys were actually acting to what they have been told. Mm. But well, I was arrested and let into the guard room. Ah, he, he said, sir, I'm sorry about that. Um, asked to place you under loose arrest. I said, by, by who? He said, by his Oga. I said, I was, I came there because his Oga actually tricked me to where I was arrested because we were supposed to be planning it together. I said, okay, Kai, I knew there is trouble. So by the moment they took me to the cell, I was the first, like I told you, I was the first to be arrested. I look up. That time, no anchor of nothing. I say, God, I know I'm not perfect, but I've been serving you in my own little ways, the best way I know. And I know you know me, and I know you. You said, this is the time for you to bless me. Is it the kind of blessing you have called? <laughs> I, don't, I know that I've been arrested for coup plot. And the, the, the conspiracy is dead. The main reason is death. So both ways is death. And if God is my witness, and I had that voice, audible voice, he said, don't worry, I am in control. Wow. That was when you were in the cell. Yes, that time. I looked around, there was nobody. I thought maybe somebody was trying to encourage me. I looked around, there was nobody. Ah, I discounted that voice. I, cont I continued to still... I was not praying, mind you, I was grumbling to God. And the voice came the second time, the same thing. Don't worry. I mean, I just told myself, I said, Shil, you're already running mad. Because I thought I was already going crazy. So I sat down. By 1 a.m., they came to pick us, no, to pick me. By the time I got to the villa, everything that I had to do with Jenna, they had been arrested. And oh my God, <laughs> I thought I would not make it back to the cell alive. You know, from 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. You understand <laughs> what, we, what we went through. So when I got back, when they took us back to the cell with everybody now, and now Thomas, I said, yes, I know. It was the devil that was talking that time. <laughs> yes, I said it was the devil. Because if God said he was in control, look at blood all over me, look at. No, this cannot be God. And you know, God, the last time he said, don't, the, he repeated the same thing. And I had those three things clearly. You know what I did? I say it's like this voice meant business. And two, I'm come because at that time, I didn't see my boss. The boys I sent, I give assignment for what we were supposed to do. I didn't see any of those boys. I was confused. I said, God, the only fellow that will tell me what is actually happening is Major Mustafa. And there's no way I can say I want to see Major Mustafa. Lord, I just said, Lord, if indeed you are in control, tell Major Mustafa, um, ask Major Mustafa to ask me to come. And I slept. You know, I thought, Kai, I, humanly speaking, there was no way out for me. I thought maybe what happened to Paul and Silas will happen, no? honestly. <laughs> You know, we, you know, we slept. I just said I was in control. I looked at human but it was not possible. I thought maybe I wake up one morning in the morning. Maybe I was already in London or somewhere. You understand? I I, just, I trusted God could do it. But lo and behold, it was the pain that woke me up in the morning. And I told myself, well, you see the year, uh, but you see, God manifested himself that same afternoon. This, the so-called Roger just came, he said, Oga, Major Mustafa said, I should bring you. Eh? God, you are indeed in control. As from this moment, I surrender everything unto you. Whatever you need to do in this case, I'm not bothering myself again. But as I was being taken away, I started hearing you, he said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That kept going until they took me to Major Mustafa. The first thing I did was to eat. I said, I'm not, I said, is it not death sentence before? 
if you give me poison and I die, is it not better for me? I was hungry now, you understand, just to joke. Then later, something happened, which I would not want to, to go into. Uh, that is why I understood the import of what God was saying that I shall know the truth and the truth shall set me free. And I told him right there that, look, I am prepared to tell the authority all that happened so that innocent people, because he knows a lot of innocent people will have gone down. So let's stop that. Then we go to Joss. I will just pick where God just got involved. That, that's what I need. I don't need anything. Yes. What so happened? one time, when we were, that picture you showed, where we were in Hancock, that was on the 14th of February, 1998. That was the first time we were presented to the world. That was the first time we were arranged. And um, they, they ask, yeah, this picture, this one. The, so they ask me that, no, they ask all of us to bring our lawyers. And that same night, God appeared to me. Wow. And I saw everybody, we were in the courtroom, and everybody had a lawyer. I was the only one without a lawyer. Wow. So I was now telling them, I said, look, have these people made up their mind to kill me? How come I am the only one without a lawyer? The judge advocates. That's the, 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 the lawyer that addresses the uh, chairman of the tribunal, the judge advocate. You know what he said? He said, uh, Fadipa, you, you don't need a lawyer. Just come here, tell them what happened, and I will know how to plead your case. Ah, uh -uh. and I woke up immediately. So I was now telling myself that I've never seen anywhere in the law court where somebody will say you should plead guilty. But why is this person telling me that? I said, no, okay. you understand? Okay, so that was where the... The, the suggestion for you to plead guilty came from. Exactly. Wow. People don't understand. It was God's direction. Direction, yes. Wow. So wow. when they came to me and said, Oga, give us the name of your lawyer. I remember that dream. That same money. I said, no, I don't need a lawyer. He said, no, sir, you know you need one. I said, okay, give me Major Wiwa. I know they will not allow Major Wiwa to come because at that time, Major Uwa too, because of his elder brother, Kensar Uwa, that was more that was killed, right? They okay. they would not allow him to say it to years at that time. I know mm -hmm. they would not allow him to come. So that same evening they came and said, Look, Oga, you, you cannot have uh, Major Uwa, but we are giving you a lawyer. This same lawyer just left service about two or three years ago as a mayor general. He was a lieutenant then. Okay. Shalangwa. So I'm saying it so that people can cross-check from him. He's alive. So the boy now said, Oga, he's so my he said, Oga, you have gone through your case file. Do you know how I want us to plead this case? Mm -hmm. I said, if you are the lawyer, just tell me something. He said, sir, I want you to go before the judge, plead guilty, and I will know how to plead your case. Hmm. You know, the guy was just, he was trying to, to, to manage it. He didn't want to tell me outright. I just laughed. I said, oh boy, they've already the right part. <laughs> this was, I now narrated my dream with him. The, the guy said, sir. And that guy is a Christian. He said, sir, you have strengthened my Christian faith today. And that's why people never knew when I said I was guilty. People never knew what has transpired between me and God. Do you understand? So now, one thing led to the other, and that what actually led me to that when they gave us the opportunity to talk on that day, I said, well, I know this time around, friends will have deserted you, family have deserted you, but I know there's only one person that will not desert you, and that is Jesus. Please, I need a Bible. Do you understand? And that alone, that alone moved the whole of my, of the Christian, even not only Christian, even Muslims, to start praying for major Fadiqwe. Do you understand? Because even in, in prison, every day God would talk to me. 
Now, most times when God says something and I try to share it, my boss then, he was confused. His father is playing with these people, you understand? How does he know most of these things? And God proved himself right. Although General decides late, but General Naravaju is alive today. God sent me to those two people. You understand? I had a revelation concerning General Adisa, and very early in the morning, I moved out of my cell, right? Because the toilet we used was close to his own cell. Very early in the morning. The moment I got there, I said, ah, Muni Oga, I was talking to him in Lotu, I was speaking Yoruba. I said, sir, I actually, I didn't want to use the restroom. I actually came here because God sent me to you. I, don't, I will not bore you with what God said. Do you know what the man said? The man shouted, he said, Chief Fadikbe, true, true, you are a pastor. He said, the dream I just narrated to him was the same dream he had that same money, which he has not shared with anybody. That shows that whenever God sent me and I say it, they will know that it's not that I was working with the security agents. Then General Larry, what did you do? He was getting sick, sickly. And God told me that I should tell him that if he does not stop the terrible prayer, it was an Islamic prayer, that if he does not stop it, he will kill him. Look, I, I cannot go and tell somebody that we are both afraid of death, that God said he will kill him. Is that my prayer for him? I couldn't, but one of these days, Kai, I said, no, I need to tell this man. I called him, I said, sir, this is what God said I should tell you. I narrated this. Do oh, this man did not respond? I said, God, when did I see this? Maybe I've goofed. So we left. Two weeks later, when we had the opportunity to come together, I called. He said, Padipe, come. You told me something about two weeks ago. I said, yes, sir. You know, I did not see anything. He said, yes, sir. He said, because it was true. And I was wondering, how did you know? If you are a Muslim, and maybe you have seen me the way I pray, but you are not a Muslim, you don't even understand this prayer. He said, all he was doing was he was doing a stagafuru stag lie. That's what he has been doing to God. Do you know what? God restored his health back that period. You understand? Now, huh, the day of the judgment came. Honestly, with what I've heard, I never believed that they would pronounce what they said to me. I thought they would say, Fadikwe, you are discharged and acquitted, you can go. But unfortunately- also, also you pleaded guilty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know what I just, when they pronounced, I said, I, I think I will send you that uh, NTA. Somebody just send it to no, me. I, so. I have it, I actually have it. <laughs> oh, you have it, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. In fact, Fadikwe, guilty. Uh, conspiracy to commit prison, guilty. Uh, treason itself, guilty, both, death. Ah, God. After the whole thing, do you know six of us were actually sentenced to death? Remember what that lady evangelist said? That six of us will go down, but nobody will die. Wow. Ha! That shows everything God has said to that period has they come know. to pass. So that shows something must happen that this death sentence will not play out. You know, I was, although I was moody, I was just thinking, I was saying, God, this is what I told God that day, after the, when they put us in the hall, waiting for the next move. I said, God, whatever you need to do, you have to do it now. Remember Vatsa. From this day, they let them to, whatever, you need, before we leave this hall, no, you have to do it all. Then, I, I had two, of my subordinates. One was given life imprisonment. One was set free. The one that was given life imprisonment came to me and said, Oga, look at my life. And 18 years in service. And I'm ending it with life imprisonment. Oga, can you see? Ah, uh -uh. I look at this guy. Are you out of your mind? You are giving life imprisonment. I'll give me that sentence. And you are coming to tell me. I said, oh boy, if you don't leave here right now, you will get to that even before me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but the other one came. He was set free. I said, he said, oh God, 
I appreciated all you did. But once I get back to Madame, what do I tell her? That was a big one for me. I needed to, to sharpen my faith. I looked at him squarely. I said, tell my wife I'm coming back home. Yes, people were there to test. Everybody looked at me and said, it's like Fadi is already running mad. I said, yes, that can only be madness. You know, if you have not taken faith to the point of madness, that faith will not work. Mm. I said, tell my wife I'm coming back home. Mm. And the rest is history today. You see that other my choice here? I was taken to Mina prison. He was taken to Brinkeby prison. So the same chopper took us, that the same donor took us from Kano. So he was supposed to be dropped at Brinning KB, but the prison staffs did not come. So they had to take us together to, to Mina. So when we got to Mina, I asked him, I said, well, come on. Why did you say that thing you said that day? He said, oh, to have pity on me. He said, oh God, no. Do you know what I was saying that day? I was seeing peace all over you. It's like as if you have been set free. Wow. That can only be God. That is God. Yes. That... Adebo Ali is alive. All these people are alive today. Wow. So now, and we started. Now, when we came out of prison, when um, God intervened, Abacha, we were out of prison now. Then one of the major that was sentenced to, that was in prison with us, he was the AO to Major Mustafa. I said, Oga, you need to see someone. I said, oh boy, I know they go Kaduna. He said, no, he will, he will call me and I will speak to the PA to Abacha. So the day they called me, the man told me, I don't even know whether that man is still alive. That's the PA to Abacha. He said, sir, I'm a Muslim. I fear God. He said, but now I fear God more. He said, in fairness to General Abacha, he never wanted to kill us. Because if he wanted to kill us, we were sentenced on the 28th of April. And we were still alive until the June, 8th of June, when the man died. He said, but there was so much pressure on the man. He said that night, that was on the 7th, on a Sunday now. In a, the, the Mustafa Khan said, Ogas approved the execution of those people. That he should go to the office and prepare the execution order. Thank God that that thing cannot be verbalized. So the guy said he went to the office, prepared the execution order for the six of us, and by 1 a.m., the order was ready. So he called Major Mustafa and said, Sir, the execution order is ready. He said, No. I'm in Suleja right now. Take it to a guy in the house. A guy will sign. And when we get to the office tomorrow, we'll fax it to Joss. So the guy said he took the execution order to a guy in the house. He said, the moment Oga saw him, he said, my friend, why are you disturbing me? Is it not the execution order? Take them to the office now. What was the big deal? When I get to the office tomorrow morning, I will sign. The man said, Obediently, he took it to the office. But my brother, hmm, God was a faithful God. He's still he said, a faithful. Yeah, oh, he's a faithful God. There was a very faithful God. <laughs> you know, Isaiah 43, I think from, from verse 1 to 3 or 3 and 4, he said, because you are honorable, mm -hmm. huh? because I love you, mm -hmm. only I will exchange your life do you know what happened? That same night, that same night was the night General Abacha died. General Abacha did not make it to the office. I'm not, I'm not really, I'm, I'm, uh, it's not that I'm, I'm, I'm rejoicing over that, but I'm just using that as to buttress that if it means God removing someone for your sake, he will do it. Whatever God says concerning you, it will always come to pass. How God wants to do it is nobody's business. No matter what, even when you have been given death sentence, hold on to God. Be it medical, be it anything. When God says no, nobody can say yes. And when God says yes, nobody can ever say no. So that night, 
God took a bachelor. And that is why I can be alive. That is why I am alive today to continue to tell the world that it can only be God. It can only be God. Because if Abacha had made it to the office, I would have made it to the, to the, to heaven. But God said, no, I still have a purpose for your life here. You have, it's not yet time. And um, since then, God has been good to me. Even my wife, my late wife, all the time I was in, in Mina, every month, every blessed month, every month, the first day of the month, or no, no, the last day of the month, my wife must come to Mina. He would drive all the way from the, uh, uh, Ibadan to Mina to see me, to bring what I would eat because I was given the privilege because I'm a, uh, I was a political prisoner. Uh, I was given the prayer to fit myself. You understand? So she comes in every month. But in um, March, she was supposed to come in February ending. But something happened, she couldn't make it. She now made it on the, on the, uh, the weekend of the first week of the month of March, which was on a first day. But you know what happened? Where she normally parked her car, they just came to money and said, remove your car, remove your car, remove your car. The um, state controller is coming. Ah, so she removed her car. That was the time they now told us. The, the state uh, prison controller came to us and said, Myself and one other Colonel Ajayi. Colonel Ajayi has gone to be with Yolanda maybe last year or so. He was with Obasan Joe's case, not with our own case. They have met him. He has spent about four, four years plus in prison. I just spent my own total of was about 18 months from arrest, uh, uh, sentence, imprisonment, and 18 months. But the man has spent about four years in a prison. So the man came and said, Yes. Do we have our family around? Ah, somebody said, my wife is there. And actually my wife came in and the man handed me over to my wife to take me home. That he's not going to leave that place until we get out of the, of the prison. And that's how God delivered us on the 3rd of March, 1999. From when I was arrested on the 20th of December, 1997. So God has been so good. And even from my wife's point of view, when, after our arrest, they were looking for my wife. You know, that's what they normally do. They want to put them on that arrest, da, 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 da. But my wife escaped and was in hiding for five months. My wife did not come out of hiding until after Abacha's death. After the Abacha's death, he was taken, he went back to the office. As at that time, she has been sacked. Yes, yeah, when she's not my job now, it's not her father's job. <laughs> so you'll be away for five months. But incidentally, the, the then MD of NDIC, late Ebadage, may God rest his soul too. He, the man was picked up because as at that time, it is like I said, I didn't want to bother you with, because a time came I wanted Fela and the children to just get away out of the um of the of the country to to the uk they we they got there late you know so they told them that it was a brother they approved fellas leave which was not supposed to so they picked the man took the man to joss i think the man was there for a week or two i can't remember now so what happened was my wife now went to the man in the office to at least um to appreciate the man and to apologize for what happened to him. And the man said, then where are you going to? He said, sir, I've been sad. Ah, sad? He called the director of personnel then. He said, my friend, why are you this wicked? Why would you punish this woman for the same offense her husband is being punished for? So he took the letter from Fela, gave it to the man. Please go and reinstate her. All her salary and if Madam, go back to your office. 
So they you pay, can they pay, they pay that all the salaries for the six months. Yes. That's and, all the, and honestly, it can only be God. It is God. It can only be God. And I pray that as many as are going through one issue or the other, they should hold on. They should wait upon the Lord. God has not said we will not go through crisis. He said we should cheer up. He has overcome. And I pray that as God has overcome for me and, and keeps overcoming, he will overcome for each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Brother Sheldon. Um, you're still in major now, Abby. Sir? You're, you're, you, you are still a major. Oh, uh, you know, once you... Once you go to prison, you lose your bet. I was lucky to be given a presidential <clears throat> um, uh, pardon. pardon by Jonathan, by President yeah. Jonathan. He was the one that actually gave us pardon. Uh, and that's why I could bear my, I can oh, see yeah. my rank and take my entitlement and yeah. everything back from government. Yes, it can only be God. So everything that Lady Prophet told you came to pass. Everything. You know, Abacha died on the sixth month. Abiola died before, and everything got settled that six months. So everything God said came to pass. And every other thing he has spoken, I'm still waiting. I believe that it will still come to pass. Right. And that is why he has spared my life to be able to enjoy it. And God since God, in his infinite mercy, took my wife away. It will be nine years in, uh, in February. Is that February or March? March 8th. No, no sorry. Uh, March, sorry. March. Yeah. It will be nine years in March. God has been so good to me and the children, the three children. Like I told you, you know, I told you I wanted three children. So he still gave me those three wonderful children. And <laughs> I think I have, I have their video somewhere. <laughs> yes, yes. They are, they are wonderful. And I thank God for their lives too. Mm -hmm. Oh, this was during your re re reunion. Yes, the other one was a reunion. Uh -huh. These are three of them, the three musketeers. I call them the three musketeers. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 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 We thank God. We thank God. Wow. Thank God. Thank you so much, um, Rochelle. Yeah, we thank God. We just show Fadipe. You know, you have you have your story had brought out a lot of things. Number one, God is not a careless God. Once my father says, he does it. Yes. The only problem we have is that we have helped him to plan how he should do it. Exactly, exactly. And God has said that. His ways are not our own ways. At all. The way he thinks are not the way we think. Mm -hmm. As the heaven is far from the heart, so are, is the way and the thought of God far from our own ways and our own thoughts. Exactly. That's, that's uh, Isaiah 55. And he said that like the rain that falls from the sky mm. and comes to the ground and waters the whole place. He says mm -hmm. that water will not go back to the sky until okay. it has fulfilled the purpose. Mm -hmm. He said, mm -hmm. so will the word of God not go back to him? Void. Void. Yeah, exactly. The word of God must fulfill the reason why he said it mm -hmm. before the word will go back and say, sir, I have done what you told me. Mm -hmm. So if there is anyone here that God has promised he has told you something, and you think it has not yet happened, and you're already Wait concluding that, um, but I thought that God said, mm. God is not a man that he should lie. Mm -hmm. Either the son of a man or something, that yes. he should repent. As he said, said, shall he not do it? Mm. Mm. When God says, God Mm -hmm. And only him knows how he wants to do it. Simple. 
That one is not your own problem. At your own problem all. is to believe. Mm. Just believe. Fear not, believe. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm so happy that at least you can see someone that went through the valley of the shadow of death. And because the promise of God was hanging on his, on his head, he went through fire. Fire will, you will feel the heat. It will, it will not, consume. not consume you. Never. He said you will pass through water. The water will seem as if it's going to take you away. The God will make a way and you will escape out mm. of it. So he didn't say that you won't feel some things. Some of us, <laughs> you know, there's a song we used to sing. Mm. Uh, no matter what I face, uh -huh. when trouble comes my way, some of you don't like that trouble. So he said, you let's when success, success come my way. I will praise the Lord. So, when problem comes your way, I will cause the Lord. Is that yeah. what you will do? Exactly. You will have troubles. In this world, the Lord said you will have tribulation. And the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. You right. not say of the evil one. Yes. But the Lord will deliver you from them all. Even mm. though you will suffer the affliction for a while. Sure, sure. So I want somebody to be encouraged. If the mm. Lord has promised you something, please. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait. The Bible says the vision is for an appointed time. Even though it tarries, wait for it. For it will not tarry. So I hope somebody is encouraged here. I hope you're encouraged. And I love the way you talked about um, when your faith has not made you mad. Mm, 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 mm. You know, faith makes you look like a madman when you are exactly. walking by faith. Exactly. A man that had been sentenced to death. And we know presidencies that have happened in this country. Once you are sentenced, before they even can beg on your behalf, you're already killed. Mm. So, Brosho, I really thank God for your life. Thank you, you sir. Him, praise him. Um, and we still thank God for the demise of Fela also. Yeah. She, she was a wonderful lady. She was, she was a child of God. Yes. Like I said, um, when she, she died, died. Mm. Fela has faith. Yes. You know, um, I think she died when she was 49. Yes, 49 years old, yes. And she said you should must celebrate a 49th birthday for her. I'm telling you. That was and you were saying, no, let's wait till 50. Exactly. She said she was not in this is the way she said, he said, I'm not excited about that future again. That was what he told me. But I I I I I was not able to connect that she was telling me bye-bye. Yeah. No, no. Well, in all things, we give praise and we thank yeah. the Lord yeah. that sustained you yes. and the children up to now. Yes. And God will not retire from doing that. We keep doing that. Amen. Amen. He will keep proving himself mighty. He will keep proving himself strong on your behalf. Amen. And, Amen. You know, one other thing I just want to mention before we wrap up is the fact mm. that um, this world is not our home. Mm -mm. The Bible says we are strangers. We are pilgrims here. The real home is heaven. Mm. The only reason why we are still here as children of God is because we still have assignment over here. You can't exactly. go until you finish the reason why God sent you into the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Russia, I know that there are, still, there are still things that the Lord he has been doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I know that there are yet lot of glorious things I want to do with your life. 
I believe so too. I and believe everything so. Everything will come to fulfillment in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. For everyone Amen. out there, you are going through challenges. No, it's not going to kill you. This sickness is not unto death. Mm -hmm. It's going to end up for the glory of God. Mm. So it's not going to always be like this. Mm -hmm. This was a man that once upon a time was in chains. Yes. Mm. Now he walks around the world a free man. Sorry, sorry everyone. Okay, so maybe it's a way of saying that I've spoken too much. <laughs> um, so, Brother I really appreciate, I really appreciate um, yes, yeah. the way you poured your heart uh, towards this day. And I love the way you made us to know that step by step, the Lord was leading you. Exactly. You understand? So yeah. I, it's really, I'm really so thrilled. You, you know, mm -hmm. the, the first time I heard that you said you were guilty, I was saying, mm -hmm. how can you alone in the midst of uh, like 30 people yes, say you're guilty? Mm -hmm. you, you understand? Yes. But you know one thing that stood out? Mm -hmm. After that, the mm -hmm. testament, I mean, the, the, the remark of people as touching you is that this man is a righteous man. This man exactly. is a man of honor. Mm -hmm. This man deserves to still be in the army. It's the type of people you want in Nigeria. I read all the comments of people. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for teaching us that we should carry our Christianity into our daily lives. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that was exactly what you did, and that's what you are still doing. And the Lord, yeah. your, your strength in the yeah. name. Lord Jesus. Amen. Somebody Thank asked you. if I had written a book. Somebody Sorry? Asked, okay. Somebody asked if I had written a book. Actually, yes. I, I have finished it with uh, someone, but, you know, I need to really proofread and look at it very well before I... Well, I'm sure maybe between now and the, uh, next year. Let's see what happens. I, I think you need to bring out the book. <laughs> I've already is 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 ready. But All right. Just to so go we'll through. Talk about it after now. We'll see what we oh. can do for ourselves. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank God you bless so you. Much, so I really happy. appreciate you. Thank you for the honor too. For uh, sharing. My regards, my regards to the uh, the three angels in your home. Yeah. Lord, we Amen. Keep Amen. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you so, so much. I hope. Someone here has been blessed. I hope someone here has been encouraged. I hope somebody here, if you have lost hope, maybe you are, I hope you have found it back. And I hope somebody here that has turned his or her back against God, I hope today you will repent of that your, your move and return back to God. And if you are here, you are not yet born again. Sincerely speaking, being born again is not about church. That's not, church is not the first. Being born again is you. Going back to what Adam lost at the first. The type of, the Bible says God will always come down to relate with Adam one-on-one. -on -one. That is what God is looking for with us. And the only way you can get back that back is for you to surrender your life to Jesus. It's for you to say, Lord Jesus, with all your heart, you say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. From now, I acknowledge you as my Lord and my Savior. Keep my life. Lead me on from now. That was what I did uh, December 24, 1980, 1984. And up to now, I've never regretted it. So please give your life to Jesus. Surrender to him. 
And even if you find yourself in the valley of shadow of death, like my brother, the Lord will be with you there. Amen. That if you find yourself there and you have not given yourself to your life to Jesus, the Lord may not be with you there. All right. Sorry, uh, we had to extend it tonight because we started very late. And I knew that the story of uh, Major Chenfadipe retired is a very compelling one. And um, so I really appreciate every one of us for um, waiting up till now. I really appreciate it. I don't take it for granted. All right, so we are, we are going to be having through it all again next Thursday. It happens every Thursday. My guest next week is a young man. I saw his video um, on the internet re I mean, recently. A guy has no hand. He was born without hand. And mm. he plays guitar. He plays, mention any of the gospel singers, um, the, the real top ones you have in Nigeria. He's one of the bass guitarists that backs them up. So it's going to be my guest next Thursday. Um, Jago is going to be sharing his story with us. Please join me. And then please, if you've not uh, gotten a copy of True It All, True It All is still available. Um, just visit tia.com.ng and you can always get the book. Or you visit Flutter Wave. And once you go to, to Flutter Wave, just look for True It All, and you can always get it there. All right. So when I come your way again next Thursday, please stay blessed. Keep loving God. Keep getting close to Him. He loves you, and He desires the best for you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you in the name of the Lord Jesus. So thank Amen. you, everyone. I appreciate you, Brushen. Once again, I thank can you, never thank you enough. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you. It is so worth. good night, everyone. Good night. Enjoy your night, and God bless you all. Amen. Amen.